Oh my, it looks like I'm back on the air. And today, with Ask the Pasker 2.0, we have Mailbag of Questions. Not to mention, not original Karate Pastor. So I spent the last three days at the English District Spring Conference, and here I am thinking that I'm the only Ask a Ninja Style Pastor that there is. Guess what? There's not in the LCMS you have at Praise Lutheran Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the original Karate Pastor. But I can't say I recommend it. We can ask for a victory because there is one who has followed through on our behalf. Got a lot of email over the last three weeks, but I don't want to leave anybody feeling like I'm ignoring them. And so here is our speed read grab bag mail response to all of your wonderful, wonderful questions. Andrew Peters points out that in this last week, an email has gone out from the LCMS supporting their What A Way Church Worker Recruitment Program. And he noticed that in this email pointing to their new blog, you can find it here, there's no mention of Christ in the entire thing. I'm sure if you search through the blog, you may find a mention of Christ. But personally, I'm not exactly happy with this What A Way Church Worker Recruitment Tool either. Simply put, it's a theology of glory. Give your life to this, you'll have a great time, have fun, serve God and make money too. That is not the way. Theology of the Cross teaches you that when Christ bids a man to follow him, he says, come with me and die. Ryan writes, I was just wondering, what's your setup for the video? Such as software and hardware. Ho ho ho. I use a Logitech Quick Cam webcam camera. It doesn't work very good. I had been using Pinnacle 12 Studio as my editing program, but man, is it horrible. So I actually just purchased Corel Video Studio Pro X3. I have no idea how well it will work. That's about it. I export the files after editing them and upload them to YouTube. And what you see is what you get. Hopefully it's getting better every day. Theology of Glory. M. Phillips just gives me a hat tip. I love the vlogs, he says. Oh, man, that feels good. LaRousse writes, hey, so you're talking about the Holy Spirit. I hung out with a young friend of mine, sisters type program, she's 13, who said that in her Sunday school class, a question was asked because another one of the students' families is going through a divorce. When two people divorce one another, is the Holy Spirit involved in that? What would you say to her? Here we have a very hard question. The simple short answer straight from scripture is no, insofar as the Holy Spirit does not lead anyone to divorce. In fact, our Lord has said very clearly, not only does he hate divorce, but no man or woman was created to be joined together in matrimony for the sake of the goodness of filling the earth with life so that they could be torn from each other again. This is, in fact, for the sake of those children they would procreate as two become one. Now, certainly, there are many problems in this fallen world, including things like abuse, to put it lightly. And one would never encourage any human being to simply sit and receive physical abuse, especially a woman at the hands of her husband. But encouraging a woman to seek protection and help and aid is a very different thing from insisting on divorce. And frankly, the vast majority of divorces in our country are nowhere near that type of extreme situation. I will try to put a link up to some information about divorce law and divorce action and the results of all of this in our country. But the long and short of it is that when Jesus tells his disciples about the reality of what divorce is and how great a sin it actually is and how no party is innocent in it, their question, their very next question is, how can anyone be saved? Jesus' answer is, with you, people, man, it's just not possible. Oh, by the way, I'm God and it's possible because of what I'm going to do by refusing to divorce you, my people. Instead, I'm going to die and rise at your hand, at your abuse, to give you life, marriage, eternally, man and God in paradise. Is the Holy Spirit ever involved in divorce? No. Is there forgiveness for divorce? Yes. Does that mean you should seek it? No. <sighs> hard question. Hard answers. What would I say to the little girl? If it is her family going through a divorce, I would simply try to talk with her about how much that must hurt and help her to let out some of the feelings of pain. If she probably is feeling guilty about it herself as if it's her fault, I would point out to her as well, this is not the fault of her, but the fault of our fallen condition, the fault of the devil's deceptions. If this is not her parents going through the divorce, I would talk with her about what marriage is, what its purposes are, and how God intends man and woman to love each other even though we're all sinners. We're all going to hurt each other. Love is not a feeling. Love is a verb, a decision, an action, 
Marriage is a promise. That was a long one. Christine lets me know my husband and I have been listening to the podcast on Weberlog ever since you started putting them out. We recently heard a song on a Bluecrest station and we thought of the podcast. We recommend Black and White by Cherry Holmes. We hope you enjoy. Now, here's the issue. I don't know if the podcast is going to keep going. I'm sorry. I know some of you will be very upset. I'm going to try. We'll see. But just in case it never does, here is the Cherry Holmes. Oh, let me tell my story, friend. That you might learn to stay away from sin. I took a life not mine to take, imprisoned for this haunting dread mistake. But speaking of the podcast, if you haven't picked it up, SRB really liked the last one. I just needed to say, she writes. That this episode is probably going to get looped quite a few times. Some beautiful stuff. Especially that particular reading from the Lutheran Confessions. Oh, and by the way, you can do that yourself at home, you know. Brought to mind one of my favorite scriptures. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I can't imagine knowing anything more comforting than that. Thank you for what you are doing. God bless. Thank you for listening and watching. I'm not going to do that for much longer. Meanwhile, in my inbox, somewhat unrelated, I did get a link that was sent to me to this amazingly long and yet very good study of baptism in the New Testament according to the text. So any of you out there that have Baptist, Reformed friends who are very anti-against infant baptism, this would be a good place to see a real study in the various actual texts of Scripture about what baptism is and what baptism does. So you can say, oh yeah, we're a Bible-believing church. Wait, you say you're a Bible-believing church and you don't teach infant baptism? Wow, you must not really be a Bible-believing church. Don't believe me? Go read it. Here is the link. I promise, no more karate. Then we have three very good questions from Matthew, which I actually spent 15 minutes answering last week, and then the sound didn't work. So, yeah, Ryan, if you do buy the Logitech webcam camera, you will have to set up a different microphone because the one that it has is completely horrible. Blah. So much junk. But Matthew's questions are important. The first one's about the document that some call Q. When with talking with those who are studying religious theory, uh, not really religions, but religious theory at secular universities, the idea of what Q is gets in the way of whether or not you can trust the actual testimony of the Gospels. This is one I really would like to spend an entire time talking about. The best place I can point you is the D.A. Carson, Douglas Moo, and Leon Morris Introduction to the New Testament, a book on what's called isagogics, or the history of the various books of the New Testament, and this one's not written by atheists, <laughs> which means that they might be a little more sympathetic to what actually the history says and supports as opposed to tearing down for the sake of deconstructing and pointing you to a Marxist ideology that destroys your faith, which is what happens in most liberal religious studies programs. The long and short of it is that this idea of Q is actually completely speculation. Q doesn't even exist. It's a hypothesized document or documents that maybe possibly those who wrote the New Testament Gospels had and relied on, which explains perhaps why some of the similarities exist in the synoptics. Um, this is hardly proof that you should not trust the synoptics. In the last 10 to 25 years, a tremendous amount of work has been done on textual studies which have affirmed and strengthened the verifiability of the autographed documents going back into the very first century. If something like a Q or Q's did exist, say when Luke says that he has researched things, if he in fact looked at other documents written by other apostles, um, this doesn't undermine in any way the Gospels. Uh, it probably strengthens them. You do have two other good questions, Matthew. You ask. teach and confess that man does not overcome sin by karate chopping it, but by in fact being nailed to a cross. And only one man did that ever. He did it for you.